Hello and welcome to Coding Demos. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a credit card form in Android. If you guys prefer to read uh, the tutorial, then be sure to check the link in the description. Okay, so let's get started. So open up Android Studio. I have my project here open. So we, in order to create the form, we're going to use a third party library called Card Form. So the link is right here. This is this is the library Android Card Form. It's developed by Braintree. So we're going to use this library inside our project. All right. So go back to Android Studio. And then the first thing you need to do is you need to add the dependency, the library dependency inside the build. Dot Gradle module app. So you open that. This is the one that we have right now, and then you add this line here. So once you add the line, Android Studio will ask you to sync your project. Okay, so let's say this is the sync now button. So you click on that and it will sync. Right. Next is once the project is fully synced, then you need to uh, add colors for the new app. We're going to change the def the, the default colors to something. Uh, actually looks better so head back to the uh, resource and then values and then colors so the, click on colors and here we have the three colors so don't worry the the code for this project is again is linked inside the uh, description click on the tutorial link and you can see the source code for this project so we're gonna have these three colors so once you added these colors for your project then the next thing is you need to go to the activity underscore main and here we're going to add the first view which is the card form so you can see here these are the colors that we've actually chose right so I, the we have a dark gray thing it's a light gray and then we have the uh, the accent color as green here so we, we're using actually the accent color for the button all right so the for the card form here it's actually the form that is, uh, this is the view that's actually provided by the, the third party library. So here we're giving the, the ID and then we're setting the width as the match parent so that the width of the, of the card form will actually fit the width of the screen. And then for the height, it's going to be wrap content because if we set it as a match parent, then it will overlap the button and the button will be hidden. So in order to give space for this button to appear on the screen, we're going to set this as wrap content. So we're done with that. Next thing is we need to add the button. So this button will have the ID as button by, and then we have the match, uh, sorry, the width will be match parent, as I said, for, so that will fit the width of the screen. And for the layout height will be met, it will be wrap content, so that doesn't uh, like take the whole view of the screen. That's why we send the wrap content here. And then we need the button to be positioned at the bottom here. That's why we're using align parent button as true. And then since it will be aligned to the bottom, so we don't need it to be that close to the, the bottom bar here. That's why we're giving a space. So we're giving margin as 10 dp here. That's why I have margin bottom, 10 dp. And we need to give a margin from the left and right side so that the button doesn't uh, get uh, close to the edges of the screen. So we'll give it a 40 dp from the left, 40 dp from the, from the right, and 10 dp from the top. All right. Next is we need to, uh, we are setting the color for the background, which is the color accent. That's what you see here. And then we're setting the text, Android text as buy now. Then we have the text color as green, uh, sorry, text color as white, so the text so you can actually see the, the text clearly. So we have the, uh, we're done with the button and the card view. So we're actually done with the activity and it's called main layout. Next thing is you need to head over to the main activity in order to uh, define the card form and the button. Now, if you run the app, you won't actually see the, uh, the card form layout. Instead, you will only see this button visible on the screen. So let's head over to main activity here. And then we're going to define the card form and the button. 
So you might be wondering why we have an alert airlock here. So what we're planning to do is once the user clicks on the buy button, okay, let's go head back to the activity and just come in here. So once the user clicks on the buy button here, then we will show an alert dialog. And this alert dialog will have the info of the card that the user have actually input. It's, it's a way of confirming whether, hey user, did, are you sure this is the correct info kind of thing? So once the user confirmed it is correct, then we just dismiss the dialog. So what that's what we're actually doing here. So we define the card form by referencing the ID that we've just created inside the activity underscore main. This is the ID. There's nothing new here. And then we do the same thing for the button. So we have the card form and the button referenced already and defined. Next is we need to set the fields that we that we need for the card form. So the card form actually has four fields. It has the card number, it has the expiration date, the CVV value, the postal code, and the mobile number. Uh, so that's actually five. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, sorry about that, it's actually five. So five fields inside this card form. So you might be wondering why we have the card required as true. Because once the user launched the form, we need the user to fill in the card form, the expiration date, the CVV, which is compulsory. That's why we set the, that's why there's a method called card required and we set it as true. So we actually force the user to input the these fields. So we're asking the card, the expiration date, the CVV, the postal code, and the mobile number. So you might be wondering what is the mobile number explanation? So the mobile number, the mobile number explanation is something that uh, as a label or a text to indicate to the user that the reason why we're asking this uh, phone number is for example for verification purpose or something like that. So we are wondering where can we see this label. So if we open the article again, alright, so this is actually the final output for the app. So you can see here at the bottom SMS is required on this number. So it's like a way to uh, tell the user that hey user, we actually do need this number because we need to do some sort of verification to confirm that you're actually the buyer, for example. That's why you see the label here. So let's head back to Android Studio. And then the final part is set up. So set up is where you want to show the card form, where you want to show this card. So we're going to show this card inside the, the main activity here. So that's why we're passing set up, we're passing it as the main activity that this which means we're going to show this card inside this activity. So we're done with the card form. So if you actually run the app, right, you will see the output as like this. Okay, so you have the card number, expiration date, CVV, postal code, country code, and the mobile number. But one thing is, if you might be wondering why there is this line. So let's say if we comment out this line, right, and then let's give this app a run and let me show you why or uh, what, what's the reason that we're using or we're adding this line. So let this uh, build. Okay, build is complete. So why we're adding this line? So if we head back to the CVP field here next to the expiration, uh, expiration date, so you click on that. So when you start inputting the value, you can see that it's actually visible to the user. Now, this CVV is an important value, so, so uh, sometimes you might want to hide this value or instead uh, make it some sort of like invisible to the user, right? The user can actually see what is inputting, but it's like something like the password field. You know, when you try to enter a password, it won't be actually seeing the the value that you actually enter. Instead, you'll be seeing like uh, uh, black dots, right? That represent the value that you actually input. So to do that, we have this line here. So let's say if we comment out, sorry, remove the comment for this 
line and then let's build again and we will see the output so if you pay close attention to this CVV value it's building up okay so it's build complete so you can see the the number uh, the value change instead of like uh, numbers where you can actually see them it turns out to it changed to the black dots here so let's say uh, we change want to change the the number so we add a different number so you can see the moment you add the number it's going to be a number first and then it's going to change the password same thing uh, so it changed to the black dot same thing uh, on what is happening with uh, when you try to enter a password so that's the reason why we have this line just for extra security because you're using a form so to make it more secure so nobody can see this uh, important value that's why you can actually set the input type as a password so the set an input, input type so you pass in the these two values here all right uh, now we're done with the form next thing is the buy button so when when the user clicks on the buy button we're going to show the Nala dialog that contains the card information, right? Then a layout, uh, a layout dialog that has the the card information. So, for example, what is the the output, right? So let's head back to the website, right? Let's click on the back, and let me show you what is the. If you scroll down to the bottom here, yes. So basically, this is the the dialog that we have. So once the user clicks on buy button, it's going to show up another dialog that has a title, description, and description will be the card details that the user has input through the form, and then we have two buttons, confirm and cancel. That's exactly what we're doing inside the uh, the buy button. So if you open up the Android Studio again, so here we have inside the button on click listener. The first thing we do is we check. We check if the user have actually filled the form completely. Otherwise, if the user didn't fill the form completely, we're going to show, you see the else check section here, we have a toast message saying, please complete the form. So if the user have actually completed the form, then we will have an alert dialog, as you can see here. So this alert dialog will have a title and we'll have uh, a message We'll set a message here. So inside the message, we'll have the values of the card details. So you can see here we have the card number, and how we're getting the card number is by calling the card form dot get the card number, and then at the end here, you might be wondering what is the slash n. So the slash n is actually used as a new line. So the first line is the card number. New line will have the card expiry date. New line. CVV, new line postcode, new line phone number. So that's what we have here. Um, so they have phone number. So we're getting, uh, so the first, the card form is we're getting the card number here. And then for the, uh, the expiry date, we do the same thing get expiration date, get a text, they get text with two string. So it's, it's going to be a string readable. And then the CVV, the same thing get CVV. And then the postal code, get postal code, and for the mobile number, get mobile number. All right. Now, if the user uh, clicks on the positive button, you can see we have created the positive button for the alert dialog. So, if the user clicks on the positive button, we're going to dismiss the alert dialog by calling dialog interface to dismiss, and then we're going to show a toast message saying thank you for purchase right now if the user clicks on negative button which is the cancel then we're going to dismiss the dialog by calling dialog interface dot dismiss finally is we're going to show the alert dialog by calling the alert dialog dot show all right so once you uh, once you're on the app you will have this output here so you can key in the the card number the expiration date, CVV, let's go through it again. So the, the card number, they are, this card form actually accepts many types of card numbers. So, but for this example, we're going to use Visa. 
so I'm going to add a visa card four one two three this is just an example one two three one two three one two three one two one right and then the you can see that if let's say I put in like a, a wrong card number then it's gonna show up an error so let's see if I delete the last digits let's say I put in nine so you can see card number is invalid all right so if I put in eight the same thing so I put in one and then the card number is valid I guess it's just a test and then we have the expiration date so we will have this month and we have the year so you can choose the month and then you can choose the year so the the first value will be the current year 2018 and then you can scroll all the way to the bottom to choose the expiry date the expiry date the year for your card so let's say we choose 30 2013 and it's going to be uh, august right so august 2013 so for the cvp and uh, let's delete that we'll just put another number seven 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 all right so the postal code we're going to add in oops and the keyboard has stopped oh well i have to use the the keyboard my computer keyboard so let's do one two three four and then for the country code i'm just going to put a, a random country code but one thing that i'll that is actually good about, about this form is if you put in the country code then based on this country code it will limit oh sorry it will format the number so I'm not sure this 12 is for which country code which country so I'm just gonna put in a number so let's see if I keep on entering numbers right and uh, in certain point it will actually stop accepting new numbers so let's see you can see here I'm trying to add another number three, but doesn't accept that anymore. So based on this country code, it will uh, format the number based on that. So once you fill in all the form, all right? So you click on the buy now, and then you get a confirmation alert dialog. So it says confirm before purchase, just to confirm that the details that I have input through the form is actually correct before you move to the the confirmation, which is. For example buying the product or service so let's say if you click on confirm then it will show us a thank you for purchase toast message here as a success message now if let's say the user didn't fill in any of the fields right let's say the user forgot for example the postal code so you can click on the buy now button and it will ask you please complete the form right let's say i add in the form sorry the postal code but i forgot the country code for example so you click on the buy now button then the same toast message appears on the screen saying please complete the form so whether you have whether you have uh, forget any of the fields or didn't even fill any of the fields at all you will still get the same message saying uh, please complete the form so that's it for this tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial uh, the the source code for this tutorial will be uh, will be in the description a link back to the article which you can read it uh, through step by step and you can actually read the source code for that if you really enjoyed this tutorial give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to this channel for more great tutorials thanks again for watching and happy coding